Yo, what's up? Creepers and Geekers, Chris the Atari Creep here. You know, I initially was backing out of making this video for a couple of reasons. One, because I think I just blew my load and I was done with it. And, you know, I'm a few days late on the whole deal anyway, and you know, other people have chimed in, but some interest was shown on my posts. Um, I got a few private messages, believe it or not. That, that very rarely happens these days. Um, asking me, you know, we'd like to hear your filthy mouth opinion. And, uh, you know, I said, fuck it. Why not? Uh, I decided not to do an actual video video. I figured I'd just do this voiceover style. And um, hopefully it won't be a complete shit show. Now, I'm going to try to input pictures periodically throughout this discussion. And hopefully they'll sync up because, you know, I'm a knucklehead that way. And um, I'm going gonna, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna to come right out with it right now. Uh, none of these pictures are obviously first party. They're not mine. I wasn't there in New York for these pictures. And I didn't recreate some of the, you'll see what I'm talking about here in a few minutes, um, to prove that what these guys did was very deceitful and, and break it down. It was bullshit. Um, so I'm going to try to get those up there. You know, I apologize to anybody who I don't give credit to, but I'm not claiming credit for any of these pictures. So, um, so the retro VGS gets announced. The Atari creep, me, gets excited, and I post a video about it. I blew my load again. And I was. I was very excited. I let nostalgia blind me. I'll admit that 100%. Um, but I was excited. I wanted a new system to come out. Um, I thought it was cool that they were using the old Jaguar cases. I thought that was a nice-looking system that, you know, just never got to see its potential. But, um... <laughs> Yo, know, I was excited to be able to be on the ground floor of a new system that was cartridge based because I'm a cartridge. I can for some reason CDs just don't seem to do it for me. You know, I, I'll play those games, but they're not as exciting for me. I don't know. Maybe it's my age, but you know, be there anticipating new games coming out, and there was talks of you know independent developers making exclusive games for this thing, and of course we all know that didn't happen. Um, it failed miserably. For a number of reasons, and I'm not going to get into the history of it because it's fairly well documented. And if you don't know much about it, you can just search Retro VGS anywhere and you can read up on it. And again, it's, it's fairly well documented. It's out there. So it fails and it fizzles away for a little bit. Well, the guy who initially started that nightmare comes out and says, you know, we're going to try something different this time. We're not done. And you know what? That's awesome because... You don't truly fail until you give up. There's plenty of things out there, be it intellectual properties or products or anything that everyone puked on, and when it came out, it took off like wildfire. So good for them. I got no problem with that whatsoever. Um, but I, I went into it skeptically, and I didn't follow it as much. I would read the Facebook posts, and if there was a video out there, I would check it out and... Whatever, but I, I kind of stayed under the uh, under the radar and into the shadows with this one. Then I find out that he's going to unveil a prototype at the largest game and toy trade show in the world. So, yeah, I don't follow these trade shows that often. I will watch, you know, uh, coverage on specific items, like, say, E3. Um, I was really excited to see the PlayStation stuff back then when PS4 was still being announced and... Nintendo, Wii U, and all kinds of stuff. You know, I'll watch specific things about it, but I don't really follow these things like a lot of you cats do. But this one, I was going to follow. And when coverage started popping up there on the internet, I was there watching it. And it just seemed like I went to a funeral. It was the craziest. It just blew my mind how blatantly disgusting these guys now, some people are saying, you know what, maybe they weren't trying to be deceitful. They were just showing whatever. I don't feel that way. I feel like these guys openly, willfully, and wantingly, because they weren't ready, said, you know what, we're going to try to pull the wool over these fucks' eyes. Just show them something. We're going to get our money, and then we are going to create what we wanted to create, which is all well and good, so long as you actually say, yeah. We're kind of fudging this, but this is basically what it's going to do. That's not what they did. They went forth as if they created this fucking thing, which we all now know is not the case. 
They, you know, I'm not even going to get into a buildup. They slapped a SNES 2 or SNES Mini, whatever you want to call it, board into the Jaguar case. They force fit it into there and said, hey, look, this is our prototype. This is what it can do. Uh, the first red flag was the cartridge. The cartridge looked off. They are going to be using supposedly the Jaguar cartridges because they have the molds for them. But this looked like the facade of a Jaguar cartridge, the face of it, and then that top little grippy thing um, glued onto something. And I have no doubt in my mind that it was a flash cart, which is not a big deal anyway, to be, be honest with you. But I seen the little tape over the where the, the slot was. Now, why would you do that? Why? Why would you do that aside from trying to hide something? Whatever. Okay, moving on. Using a flash cart is not a big deal to me for one reason, one reason only. This is a prototype system. You need to do what you got to do to get it to work. Okay? If that's the way you got to go to show off that your hardware is going to do what you want it to do, then if you use a flash cart system, no big deal. He even said there's five or six games on this cartridge. But he went through every possible avenue to try to hide the fact it was a flash cart, all the way up to I did not want to see the system boot up. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, one, I think he just wanted to hide the fact that it was a flash card and didn't want to show that BIOS menu. Okay, whatever. But because he had jammed that SNES board inside that thing, it had to always be in the on position. So the only way to boot it up was to plug it in and unplug it. And that would look stupid. Now, is a prototype supposed to look perfect? No, of course that's not. And a lot of times prototypes turning into something completely different. What you do with a prototype is you come up with a concept you build something that does somewhat what you want it to do just to show I can do this, give me money, and I will produce this for you if you so choose to want to purchase it. But that's not even what they did. They took an existing product and just put it into something and tried to pull the wool over your eyes. Now, the first clue was obviously seeing in the rear of the, of the Jaguar case which you don't necessarily see in a lot of these. I mean, eventually you do, but they were very they were very specific on certain angles that they were filming this thing at. But you see this thing jetting out of the back, which is, again, whatever. But it's covered in a whole shitload of electrical tape, and it just looks wonky. It looks like it's trying to hide something. Um, prototypes are usually held together with glues and stuff like that, you know? Pieces of this, that, and the other thing. Um but this thing just looked, first of all, the Jaguar case looked too perfect. And then you have that in the back. So it's like, it, it's a red flag. But then when they showed what was sticking out of that thing, there was no doubt in my mind. I've had an SNES too. I know exactly where the plugs go. And that leads us to the next thing. The actual AV plug. That is a very specific plug. It's unmistakable you go into any thrift store and you're looking at their plug thing you see that amongst all these other thousands of cords and it sticks out like a sore thumb now the placement of that in the power supply plug are exactly where the snes2 ones are so now i'm saying to myself okay that's 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 a super nintendo now of course i didn't know 100 percent at the time i was just guessing i was speculating and now i'm already kind of aggravated so then i after i get done watching these trade shows and i'm like fuck you know these guys <laughs> i can't believe this shit i wanted to see what other people thought about so of course i youtubed it and i saw some really great pictures and I, hopefully i've shown them to you already or you're about to see them but this one guy in the atari age forums and if i if i don't have the time to try to search for his name and everything i apologize I'm going to post his pictures up here, hopefully. And I keep saying hopefully, because hopefully they'll go up. But he actually took his Jaguar, pulled it apart, took his SNES Jr., pulled it apart, put it together exactly without all the tape, smoke and mirrors and bullshit, and it's a 100% match. And that just solidified it for me right there. Um, these guys are, are a bullshit. Um now, first of all, knowing that he was using the Super Nintendo controllers to begin with should have been kind of a red flag, but again, it's a prototype, so who knows. But he had claimed that the thumbsticks on 
the ones that he wants to use, which are basically Wii U third-party aftermarket bullshit controllers to begin with, didn't work. But, okay, that's great. But he was playing Super Nintendo games, which don't use analog thumbsticks. They use digital input. They use D-pads and buttons. And that controller so happens to have that. Uh, maybe I can get past the fact that he says he just couldn't sync them up just yet. But you know why he couldn't sync them up? Because it was a Super Nintendo. That's why. There was no work put into it. And that's what aggravates me. There was no work put into it. There was no thought put into it. It was a last-minute stitched effort to try to keep this fucking thing going. And you know what? I only see one type of person who would ever fathom buying this, hopefully, at this point. The one guy that sees potential value in a failed system, like the Jaguar. You know, you buy it, you keep it in the box, you put it in the closet for 20 years, and then hopefully it'll be worth something because it was that one failed system that no one bought, and you have like one of eight that are out there. Um, other than that, I don't think any of you guys should back this thing. Um, even if it does come to fruition and becomes what they say it's going to become, just simply because of the history of the retro VGS, now fast forwarding to this, I, I, I don't see why you wouldn't be pissed off enough to say, you know what, fuck these guys, fuck their deceitful bullshit, and um, yeah, and just not back it. Please don't back it. I'm asking you guys, please don't back this thing. I don't care what comes of it. Um, price points right there, about 150 bucks. That's that's reasonable, but come on, you, oh, you can't. You know, I think it was Pat. Pat the NES punk said, "If I took the guts of my cell phone and put it into the shell of something else, would you consider that a prototype?" And that's exactly what these guys did. They took the shell of something, put the guts of something that already existed, and just oh man. It, <laughs> I'm at a loss for words. Um, yeah, it was just bullshit. These guys, and you know what? I, I, this is going to sound stupid, but they're, they're toying with our emotions. I wanted this thing to work. I really did. But after this, I just, I have no faith in it whatsoever. And uh, I really think someone should go out there and try to work on making a good controller for the 5200. So, guys, that's, that's it. This is about my ninth take of this thing. And, uh, yeah, it's about half of what I initially was recording, but it sounded like crap. But, you know, what are your thoughts on this whole Coleco Chameleon bullshit? Um, are you going to back it? I mean, if you're going to, I'm obviously not going to hate on you because, you know, if you're excited about something, you're excited about it. But me personally, I think these guys have just proven that they're inadequate, they're inept, and they just don't have what it takes to do what needs to be done. Um, smoke and mirrors, don't, you know, smoke and mirrors, don't, don't, don't bullshit me, you know, fuck with me once, shame on you, fuck with me twice, or I guess shame on me, right, but yeah, that's it, guys, so, hope everyone's having a great week, um, happy weekend to you all who, you know, actually get weekends off, and, uh, until next time, this is the Atari Creep, and, uh, bye bye